How to get the most of Grammarly free. It's Kayla on behalf of Grammarly to tell you all about the free Welcome to this course on philosophy of education. My name is Stephen Hicks. I'm a professor of philosophy. And one of my very strong areas of academic and professional interest is education. In this course in philosophy of education, a good place to start is with two natural questions. Uh, what is education? Uh, what is philosophy? And then a third follow-up question, what does philosophy have to do with education? Now, in this course, we're not going to presuppose uh, extensive background knowledge in educational theory and practice, uh, nor are we going to presuppose extensive background knowledge in philosophy, so we can start uh, at the beginning, so to speak. So, with that in mind, let's uh, go to the board here where I have the, the title of the course, uh, Philosophy of Education, written down, and start with uh, those two questions. First, education. Uh, what is this? If we were to try to define it or come up with an explanatory descriptor of sentence uh, in the first place, how would we go about doing so? Well, we might start by brainstorming the kinds of things that come to mind when we think about education. Certainly, we start to think about knowledge. So we can write that down. We uh, might think about skills, right, that would operationalize or put the, uh, the knowledge into practice. Uh, we, uh, in a social setting, know that there is uh, a student. Usually the student is a younger person. Uh, if it's a social activity, the person is not self-taught or, uh, or an autodidact. There's typically a teacher, right? uh, an instructor, who is uh, guiding the person right through the, uh, through the process. It is a process. Uh, it might be an important concept here. Typically it's a, a, a longer process. Um, starting with younger people, typically the teachers are older peer people who are, are more experienced, but at a certain point we want the students not to be uh, under the tutelage of a teacher anymore, that we're trying to uh, transform the, the, the students into uh, adults who, uh, uh, once they've finished their formal schooling and their formal education, can go forth and live their, their lives more independently. They may be uh, lifelong learners, of course, but uh, uh, that's not primarily what the educational process uh, is, is about. Okay, now suppose we then tried to put all of this uh, together in a definition. We said, all right, here is education. All right, definition. It's a uh, process of learning. and teaching, primarily the young. The knowledge and skills necessary for adult life. All right, good starting point. Uh, points of controversy that uh, are, uh, are, are worth raising questions about here. Uh, we know that, of course, older people can be uh, educated as well. Some people will come back for a second educational career. Uh, so do we need to expand the definition in that category? We know that there are people who are self-taught. Uh, so is the teaching part necessary here? We've mentioned knowledge uh, and skills. Uh, are there other things that we need to add? Do we, for example, talk about character? Uh, is that something that we essentially should add? So in various ways, we could have a discussion and debate about the exact scope and application of this particular definition. But I'm going to use this uh, as an initial good starting point for introducing education in its connection to philosophy. We have enough to go on to get that on the board. We can take this uh, initial definition as uh, serving generically for any species uh, uh, in the development of which 
the young have a process of learning before they are ready to function fully as adults of whatever type of species uh, that they are. Of course, most plants, they don't have any learning component. Uh, other species, perhaps like uh, insects and uh, fish, at most will have a minimal amount of learning uh, that they engage in in their lives before they're fully functioning adults. For more complicated species, though, it may be a matter of a season. Uh, cats, for example, might be born in the spring, learn over the course of several months as they are growing into adult cats, and then by the fall uh, uh, come to sexual maturity and know everything that they need to know to function as adult cats. Dogs typically are a little bit longer. Dolphins, chimpanzees, and elephants, complicated species like that, their maturity is a longer process, a matter of many years. But even in the case of those more complicated animals, the amount of actual learning and education that they need to uh, acquire in order to be able to function as adults in that species is, is uh, much less than the amount uh, of time that human beings engage in. Uh, their education. So that points up, I think, one important philosophically charged fact about human education that I want to draw our attention to at the outset, and that is the length of time that we as human beings devote to this process of education. Uh, by the time, for example, even if we take as a baseline puberty, we'll say here, biologically and hopefully psychologically, uh, a young human being is going through the process of becoming an adult human being. That is uh, 12 to 13 years uh, on average. And so the idea is that childhood uh, being a process of, of a dozen years or more and that the primary thing that the student should be engaged in or that the young person should be engaged in at that point is being a student or learning the things that he or she needs to be able to function right, as, a, as a human being. That is an enormous uh, investment in, uh, in time. Um, the other important thing and I think distinctive thing about human education is that we engage in the process systematically. Right? So I'm going to use an abstract noun, systematicity. In the other animal species, even those other animal species for which there is an extended learning period before the, uh, the, 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 the young animal becomes an adult, the educational process is largely a matter of hit or miss. Right? When an, uh, an opportunity arises for, the, say, the mother wolf to teach the young cub a lesson in hunting, then a hunting lesson will ensue. Right, or any sort of other lesson uh, that, that arises. But it's more opportunistic and over the course in a helter-skelter kind of fashion that the young animal will be exposed to the kinds of things that he or she needs to know uh, in order to function as an adult. When we as human beings do our education, the education of our young, we don't do it helter